Santos Limited South Australia Northern Territory Oil Search is an Australian energy company, the country's second largest independent oil and gas producer. Topic: <laughs> Operations. Santos is one of Australia's domestic gas producers, supplying sales gas to all mainland Australian states and territories, ethane to Sydney, and oil and liquids to domestic and international customers. The company's core business was built on gas and oil discoveries in the Cooper Basin, predominantly spanning northeast South Australia and southwest Queensland. These gas reserves are one of the sources of natural gas to Australia's eastern states. Santos is the primary venture partner and operator of natural gas processing facilities at Moomba in South Australia and Balera in Queensland, and pipelines connecting those facilities with Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Rockhampton and Mount Isa. One of the pipelines is the Moomba-Adelaide pipeline system which carries gas to Adelaide and regional South Australia. It has made significant discoveries in the Browse Basin, off the northwest of Western Australia. On the 22nd of August 2014, the company announced a major gas condensate discovery at the Lassiter One Exploration Well in WA274P in the basin, in which Santos has a 30% interest in company with Chevron 50% and Inpex 20%. It was the second major discovery by the company in the area in two years. Santos also loads product onto small Cape vessels at Port Benython in South Australia. Santos has its headquarters in Adelaide. It also has offices in Brisbane, Sydney, Perth, and Jakarta. Since February 2016, the company's CEO has been Kevin Gallagher. He was preceded by David Knox. In August 2018, Santos announced the acquisition of Australian oil and gas company Quadrant Energy for $2.15 billion. As part of the deal, Santos will obtain Quadrant's 80% stake in Dorado in the Bedout Basin in northern Western Australia. <laughs> International activities The company also participates in on and offshore oil and gas exploration and production ventures throughout Australia, in the Timor Gap, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, India, Bangladesh, Egypt, Vietnam and Kyrgyzstan. Liquefied natural gas Santos has an interest in the Darwin LNG project, exporting liquefied natural gas to customers in Japan. It is also a partner in the development of the Gladstone LNG project in Queensland and in the PNG LNG project. On 7 September Santos pledged to divert 30 petajoules of gas from the Gladstone LNG plant slated for export into Australia's East Coast market in 2018 and 2019, as part of efforts to avert government-imposed restrictions on gas exports to solve local gas shortages. Because of shortages in its own supply of gas for export, Santos rely on purchasing gas from third parties to supply its overseas contracts. topic financial results Santos production for 2008 was 54.4 million barrels 8,650,000 cubic meters of oil equivalent Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortizations and exploration expenses for the period was $2.8 billion representing after tax profit of $1.65 billion on the 22nd of August 2014 the company said its oil production was at its highest level in 6 years. For the first half of 2014, Santos recorded sales revenue of $1.8 billion, an increase of 20% on the comparable period the previous year. Sales volumes rose by 5% to 28.9 million barrels of oil equivalent. 
As a result of the company writing off its investment in a coal seam gas project in Indonesia, the 2014 first half profit being down 24% at $206 million. In 2015, Santos' financial troubles became more evident as the share price crashed to one third of its value from the previous year. It hit a 12 year low and has stayed low since. This occurred because of mounting debt and an oil price slump. CEO David Knox was forced to leave, with Chairman Peter Coates stepping into the role and leading a strategic review of the gas company. Options of partial asset sale, even takeovers, has been speculated including, "...no options will be ruled out from consideration, but neither is any particular option a preferred course at this time," Coates said. Lobbying and political donations Santos has engaged Adelaide-based consultancy Bespoke Approach to lobby the Australian Government and the state governments of New South Wales and Queensland. Other lobbyists which have represented Santos include, Creeb Gavin Anderson Australia Limited, Craig Emerson Economics and Australian Public Affairs. In the financial year 2012–13, Santos Limited gave donations directly to Labor, Liberal, LNP and national political parties at state and federal levels. Donations are tabled below. Incidents <inaudible> 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 Mumba explosions, South Australia <laughs> 2001 In June 2001, a pump exploded at the liquids pumping station killing process operator Colin Jeremy Sutton. Another worker received burns to the neck and hand. In the South Australian State Industrial Relations Court, Santos pleaded guilty to three counts that it had "...failed in its most basic responsibility as an employer," by not ensuring its employees were safe from injury and risk to health. The company was fined $105,000. The magistrate said Santos had failed to supervise Sutton or train him in the use of an emergency shutdown device. Topic 2004. On the 1st of January 2004, an explosion occurred at Santos Mumba Processing Facility. The blast was traced to the Liquids Recovery Plant (LRP), where an inlet manifold and a related flange weld both failed after corrosion by mercury. Mercury was released along with a cloud of flammable gases, including methane, ethane, propane, and butane. Workers saw the cloud and raised the alarm, shutting down the plant and evacuating to designated safety points. Some workers allegedly did not hear the emergency alarms. The gas cloud ignited on contact with a heating unit 150 meters away, and an explosion followed. The plant was seriously damaged. Mumba workers who sought to remain anonymous told the Australian newspaper on the 5th of January that the company was running a cowboy operation, and that it was luck, not management that had prevented any loss of life. They also said that the emergency muster area was too close to the plant in the event of a major tank explosion, gas supplies to South Australia and New South Wales were interrupted, leading to downtime in the manufacturing sector and short-term rationing measures in both states while repairs were made. Santos spent $40 million on remedial action following the incident. In 2011, the South Australian Industrial Relations Court ruled that 13 employees had been placed at risk due to critical safety shortcomings. These included an inadequate risk assessment which failed to identify the likelihood of plant failing due to liquid metal rendering it brittle. The company pleaded guilty to breaching the Occupational Health Safety and Welfare Act after a safe work prosecution and was fined $84,000. 2000 Sidoyo mud flow, Indonesia 
In May 2006, the Sidoyo mud flow disaster occurred in East Java, Indonesia. Controversy exists surrounding the probable cause of the disaster which has displaced approximately 10,000 people and covered villages, farms and industrial areas with mud. The eruption is ongoing, though since 2011 the rate of flow has reduced. As of 2013, the contended probable causes are drilling for oil and gas, an earthquake with its epicenter some 250 km distant, or a combination of the two. Santos owned an 18% stake in the project which was drilling in the area at the time, under the control of PT Lapindo Brantas and in partnership with private Indonesian oil and gas company Medco Energy 50% and 32% stakeholders respectively. Santos stake in the project was sold to Minarak Labuan, the owner of PT Lapindo Brantas in December 2008. Labuan also received a payment from Santos of $22.5 million, .9 million to support long-term mud management efforts. The amount was covered by existing provision for costs relating to the incident. Santos had provision for $79 million, .3 million in costs associated with the disaster. Santos had stated in June 2006 that it maintained, "...appropriate insurance coverage for these types of occurrences". <laughs> Port Benython groundwater contamination, South Australia In May 2008, groundwater contamination was reported to the Environment Protection Authority (EPA) following detection at Santos Port Benython site, Spencer Gulf, South Australia. Hydrocarbons were found floating on and in the groundwater. 150 inspection wells were later established and a 450 metre long, 1480 feet cement bentonite wall was constructed to stop the further spread of contamination off-site including to the marine environment. In May 2012, Santos reported declining rates of hydrocarbon recovery from groundwater extraction wells and claimed that their remediation efforts were working. Topic: Pilliga CSG wastewater spill, New South Wales. In 2011, a 10,000 litre spill of untreated coal seam gas water occurred, impacting native vegetation and soil in the Pilliga forest. Coal seam gas extraction produces water that can contain lead, mercury, various salts, and other heavy metals. Rehabilitation has been trying to restore this site to remediate elevated contamination in the soil. Jackson oil spill, Queensland In May 2013, an uncontrolled oil spill was reported in Santos Zeus Field near Jackson in Queensland's remote southwest. The flow lasted almost a week before international experts were able to contain it. The rate of flow was estimated at 50,000 litres per day. <laughs> Natural uranium, Narrabri aquifers, New South Wales In 2013, groundwater monitoring detected elevated levels of salinity and heavy metals near Santos Tinsfield Ponds in the Pilliga Forest. Also it was reported that at the Bibblewindy Ponds, uranium 20 times above the safe drinking levels was detected. A New South Wales government investigation into the incident determined the leak was small, localised and contained and drinking water sources and stock and domestic water sources were not impacted nor were they at risk. The investigation also found that the uranium detected was not from the pond's water, but was from naturally occurring uranium in the surrounding soil that was mobilised from the leaking pond. Water resource use Santos activities draw significantly on available water resources. 
In 2013, the three jurisdictions in which Santos withdrew the greatest volume of water were Indonesia 12.5 gigalitres, Queensland 7.5 gigalitres and South Australia 7 gigalitres. The company's water resource extraction and use is published in an annual sustainability report. Sponsorship Santos sponsors many community activities, events, institutions and projects in jurisdictions where they operate commercially. In October 2014, the advertiser claimed that Santos spends $10 million annually on South Australian community groups, events and institutions. Figures published in Santos 2014 Sustainability Report state that $7,487,731 was spent on community investment in South Australia that financial year and $3,108,057 in Queensland. Other jurisdictions received between $5,000 South Korea and $775,255 Western Australia and the total community investment spent across all regions during 2013-14 was $13,217,617. Santos sponsorship of police campaigns and cultural events has led to controversy in Queensland and the Northern Territory. Recipients have included In South Australia Adelaide Symphony Orchestra Art Gallery of South Australia Adelaide Botanic Garden Come Out Festival 2009 People's Puppets Project, Wyala Committee for Adelaide, founding member Asasia Festival Rias $5 million AUD Foundation Partner Santos Conservation Centre at the Adelaide Zoo Santos Stadium Athletics Venue Santos Tour Down Under UCI World Tour Cycling Event The Smith Family University of Adelaide, Australian School of Petroleum $25 million AUD over 10 years In Queensland Queensland Art Gallery $1.5 million Australian dollars over five years Santos GLNG Food and Fire Fest Queensland Police Services Stay on Track Outback Road Safety Campaign 2012 -2014. Opposition to Santos sponsorship In December 2014, photographs showing Queensland police vehicles featuring Santos Company logos created controversy and pushed the topic of corporate sponsorship of police activity into the mainstream media. Santos contributed approximately $40,000 to the program. Queensland Police Commissioner Ian Stewart described the vehicles as PR vehicles that we use at shows, we use at expos, all of those sorts of things just as any PR machine would be used by a company or another government organization." Online activists referred to the sponsorship as a "...conflict of interest," and "...a bloody disgrace," with Stop Brisbane Coal Trains spokesman John Gordon calling for the Logos to be removed. The Lock the Gate Alliance also spoke out against the deal. Spokesperson Drew Hutton stated that, "...advertising a company like Santos, which is a big coal seam gas company in Queensland, on the side of vehicles of the police whose job it is to enforce the law, including I might add against protesters who don't like coal seam gas, is a really bad idea." Lock the Gate would not be able to sponsor a police car, nor should it. Neither should a company." Santos responded by stating that the company was, "...proud to support a program that promotes safe driving and is saving lives in Outback Australia." Queensland's Police Minister Jack Dempsey defended the program and its sponsors stating, 
The Queensland Police Services Stay on Track Outback is an award-winning road safety program aimed at keeping communities safer and reducing road trauma in regional Queensland. It has been in place since 2012 thanks to support from a number of sponsors. In 2015, the Frac Free NT Alliance called for the Darwin Festival to reject Santos' sponsorship due to the company's involvement in shale gas exploration and development in the Northern Territory. Dane Pratsky, aka Frackman, supported the call. Topic: <laughs> Fossil fuel divestment. In October 2014, the Australian National University sold its shares in Santos and several other companies in the nation's most reported case of fossil fuel industry divestment. Santos responded by claiming that gas is necessary in the state's future energy mix and the advertiser published its economic value to the state. At the time it was reported that Santos employed 3,500 people nationally, thousands of contractors and had a $13 billion market value. Politicians expressing their support for the company included the Prime Minister Tony Abbott and federal MPs Jamie Briggs, Christopher Pine, James McGrath, Greg Hunt and Treasurer Joe Hockey. Several senior state ministers also spoke out against the decision to divest in South Australia and Queensland, including South Australian Treasurer Tom Coutsantonis. Former Liberal Party leaders John Hewson and Malcolm Fraser both supported the university's right to choose how and where to invest its money. The university's Chancellor Gareth Evans told Australian Mining, Neither I nor the Vice Chancellor nor any other ANU Council member, to my knowledge, has described Santos specifically as a socially irresponsible company. Quote, in a letter to Santos CEO David Knox, Evans said the university regretted any embarrassment suffered by Santos over the decision to divest. <laughs> <laughs> 